Uh, evening, guys. Um, so, yeah, so as um, I was just introduced, um, I'm the, uh, the head coach at Fulham FC Women. Um, I'm going to talk to you about progressing the game. And I guess some of the things linked to what, um, what Sally was just talking about in terms of the experiences and the things that I feel that should be in place to enable women's, the women's game to progress. I'm going to link it back to some of the things we talk about at the women's, uh, in the women's team that we have at Fulham and the things that we do there. Um, so you'll see lots of images and lots of things about us. Um, apologies, that's just nature of, of the role I guess I've got with uh, being able to present this stuff. So, so um, similar to, to what Sally said, um, I've talked about the game plan for growth, which the FA set out actually in 2017, but I know it's still in action at the moment. And they set out that they wanted to achieve these things, which obviously was also mentioned earlier. Um, and what that basically has meant is that there's a massive increase in the participation levels and also people that are now watching and viewing the game. Um, and the FA reported that after the World Cup, so post-World Cup, there's a, a, a new, new batch of participants up to sort of 850,000 uh, players that want to play the game. Um, and that, I guess, with these things has caused a bit of a, a challenge, a, a really positive one, because it means that we're getting people, more people playing the game, but it's caused a bit of a challenge. And the challenge being that we've got lots of new players um, that want to play the game, and to be able to fill or enable those players to play, we have to create loads of new teams. And sometimes, unfortunately, you can't always um, put the right things in place to enable them to have the great experiences that we think everyone should deserve. Um, so I'm just going to talk about some of the things that I think is really important that you should try to do. If you're going to look to set up a team that are going to um, involve new players and, and, and new female players, what we should try to look to do. We need dedicated staff. We need staff who understand the needs of, of female footballers and female athletes. Um, and we also need people um, who are interested in developing the game. Um, Emma Hayes, uh, a couple of weeks ago, said that it's fair to say I'm a female coach in an industry where women have always been treated like small men. And it's really, really true. And what we need to try and do is have people, it doesn't matter, I don't think, in my opinion, whether they're male coaches or female coaches, but people who are really interested in developing the female game and the needs of female athletes. Um, in particular, with the team that I coach, we know that the group require uh, some amount of time just to have some social connection before every session. And so we have to be able to build that into our session to enable that to take place. And if it doesn't, then sometimes it can have an impact on the learning or, or the development of the group throughout the, throughout the session. And so we have to build that in. And it's really important that we understand that. It needs player experiences that, that make make players feel safe. They make, make sure that they feel um, that they, they can come to the environment that they're at and, and, and enjoy it and, and make sure that they build relationships with people that they play with. Um, again, we're really fortunate at Fulham that we have the facilities that we have up there in that top left that picture with the dome and the outdoor astro turf. And of course, that stuff always helps. And making sure that we're having environments and playing facilities that are appropriate for the game is important. Um, but it's also about some of the care stuff, which I know has already been touched on too, that we always make sure that we have a physio that at every single training session, at every single game. And we also, uh, um, if you see in this bottom, bottom right photo, that we also have a tracking uh, device, which um, basically it collates all the physical and technical data. So actually the straps on the boots of the athlete in the bottom right hand corner there um, enables us to understand a little bit more about what the players go through in a match day and also training environment so that we can, in, it informs our training program basically to enable us to help them uh, perform properly on a, on a Sunday when we play. One of the other experiences that we also offer is that the play, every single home game that we have is filmed. Um, we have every single uh, match day, uh, home match day, sorry, filmed. And that also provides opportunity for learning for the players and for us as staff, but it also enables us to market the game and the quality that's on show in the game as well. So I'm just going to show you this short clip. It's one of the goals that we scored earlier in the season. Um, you might recognize some of the players. You may know them. Um, I know some are students here. Um, some are in, actually are in, in, the, uh, in the crowd. But I think it's part of our duty to, to make sure that we demonstrate the quality on show and to make sure that people understand that the game has progressed and develops. Um, and this is a great tool to, to do it. It's a good finish. I think you all agree, hopefully. There's no applause there. Um, so in order to, to, to support this as well, we, we also need to make sure that we create a culture um, which does like a number of different things. But on the right hand side here, you'll, you'll notice that we, we're in our team huddle here. And we, this is something that we, um, we do at every single training session. We do at every single match day. Um, we make sure that every single player is connected with the staff in a huddle to have a discussion. And part of the reason why that's really important is 
we talked about the social connection earlier. It, it just binds people. Um, it makes people feel like we're part of a collective, and that's really, really important, important for the game too. You'll also notice that there's players, um, or there are people in that, in that um, photo that aren't in match kit. They're in full training kit. Um, and that just demonstrates, I guess, the culture in which we've been able to create is that people want to be a part of the, the group huddle, even if they're not part of the match day squad. Um, and I think it just shows the strength of the culture which we have here. Um, but that is so important. It's really important because that means that those people still want to turn up, even though they've not been selected, and demonstrates that they, they have a real interest in the game too. And then on the left-hand side there, it's also really important that we create a culture where um, we inspire people to come, want to carry on play, or to play, sorry. Um, we have to inspire young fans and young participants to, um, to carry on what we're already starting with the players that we've got in the teams. Um, and so we have to make sure we spend time engaging with those individuals. And we've been really fortunate that at Fulham where we've got some games um, where we can play on the arena pitch and we've got a stand and we've got big crowds that are coming to watch us, so that we can get the opportunity to do that. Um, and that's really important too. It also needs player pathways. It needs the opportunity for players to go through the, the levels, in uh, of whether that's an, uh, an age group level or whether that's an ability level, to get to the point of playing senior football. Um, and again, this is just a model that we have at Fulham that we're still developing. And if I'm, if I'm brutally honest, I don't think it's still good enough. It's something that we're still working on. Um, but it starts at the very, very sort of lowest age category where we've got work that we do in primary schools and across our schools program that, that enables players to, be, um, to, to have a taster of football, to understand what it is about. Um, and then from there, we have the opportunities for them to progress either into ability groups or into age group um, categories, whether that's just our participation-based weekend football, um, all the way up through to our sort of girls' development centre, which is a little bit more focused on their development as, as players, um, and then into our women's team. And this stuff is stuff that we're always evolving in, and we feel like it's really important that we need these things in place to help that. That is me. Thank you very much for listening.